Welcome back to Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. Although, if you've been working along with these lessons and have gotten this far, you're not really a total beginner anymore. So far, we've created a, our person class and our book class, and we've linked them together by making person a field in the book class. Now we're going to start putting it all together by creating our actual library class. What do we want our library class to do? Basically, we want to keep a list of books, our book objects, and a list of people, our person objects. How many books and people will we have? Well, it's hard to say. We might estimate that we'll have no more than 100 of each, but then we could give the program to a friend who has 200 books. Clearly, it would be better if the program could handle any number of books and people. Fortunately, Java has a number of classes designed to make processing with lists easy. We're going to use one of them called the array list. The array list lets us create a list of any length, so we don't need to worry about whether we need 100, 500, or thousands of objects in our list. Let's start by going to the Eclipse scrapbook and getting familiar with the array list. We'll open the scrapbook from the package explorer by double clicking. If we have anything out here, we'll let's just erase it and let's get started. Now, the array list is part of the Java util package. So the first thing we need to do is add the import statement into our scrapbook, which we'll do by going up here and pressing the import statement. We'll say add packages. Start typing so it's part of the java.util and here it is here, double click, and we've added Java Util. So this will allow us to access the ArrayList class without needing to put in the full package name as well. Next, let's see how to create an ArrayList. We create the ArrayList using the new command. We'll go new, and hit the control space, create object. We'll type ArrayList and this time we're going to type something new. We'll talk about it in a minute. Tab, we'll call this list. There are no arguments. And that's our first line. Next, we'll add two strings into the array list using the array list add method. We type list dot, and now we get all the methods available in the array list. And we can see there's quite a few. First one is add and we'll just add a string called test1. We'll do the same thing and add a string called test2. Now let's look at this first line of code. We're creating a new array list object, but we've got a new construct, the word string, inside the less than and greater than sign. This is using a feature called generics. This tells the compiler that this particular list can only hold objects of type string. We'll get a compiler error if we try to put in a different type of object, say an integer or some other object. Now if we leave this off, then an array list can hold any type of object in Java. But usually when we create a list, we know that the list is only going to be holding one type of object. If so, we always want to specify the type when we create the list. That way, if we try to put in a different type, we'll get a compiler error. And we'd much rather get an error and be able to fix the error when we're developing and compiling than to take the chance of having an end user getting an error when they're running the program. Now the next two lines here just use the add method inside the ArrayList class to add two strings to the list. Now Let's run this snippet inside the scrapbook and take a look at our list. So we'll type list so we have an expression to inspect. Then we'll highlight and press the inspect button. Here's our array list. If we expand this element data, we can see we have our two strings, test1 and test2. Now note that we start numbering at zero, and this is a common thing in many programming languages including Java, is that arrays and lists always start numbering at zero. 
Now let's close this by clicking somewhere here and let's try something different. Let's try adding an integer to our list. We'll highlight again, press the inspect, and this time we get an error message saying we can't add an integer into an array list string. It's not applicable, which is what we want. Now we're going to want our lists to hold book and person objects, so let's create a book list. First, we'll change the type to book in the declaration. Now we need to create a couple of book objects. We'll use the code assist, create our book object called B1 and we'll call it Great Expectations. And we'll do the same thing, create an ob a book object called B2 and we'll give it a name War and Peace. So now we've got our two book objects. Let's change this to add the books to the list. B1 and B2. We'll take out this line that tried to add an integer to the list. We'll highlight, inspect. Now I've got to move this over, so I'm going to go over here off the screen and move. And now when we look at the element data, we've got two book objects, Great Expectations and War and Peace. And again, notice they start numbering at 0, so they're objects 0 and 1 click over here. Now let's try one more thing. We'll create a person object and then assign that person to one of the books using the set person method in the book class. So here's the code. First we'll create a new person object person p1 equals new person then we'll use the set name to set the name of the person to Fred. And then we'll take the B1 object and set the person in B1 to P1. So we've created a new person and then we've said that this person is the one currently reading book B1. Now again we'll highlight, inspect, again I'm going to move this see it. So now when we drill in to the element data again we see book a great expectations but this time we've got a person in the person field of this book. So now when we drill in and expand that we see we've got Fred in here inside the person field. So what we've got here is a top level object our array list, then in the next level we've got element data of our different books, and then the third level we've got inside one of the books the person field referring to a person object. So we've got a person object inside a book object inside our list. Next, let's take a quick look at some other methods available in the ArrayList class double click here to give us a little more room. The easiest way to retrieve an object from an array list is by position or index. And as we saw, the index starts with 0. So the first object in the list is item 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So to re retrieve the first book, we use the get command. So we'll go down here to our list object, type the dot, and again we see all the methods. When we type get, we can say get index 0, so get 0, and that will give us the first item on the list. So let's inspect this, and as expected we get a book, which is what we wanted and expected. Now let's try something a little tricky. At this point we've got a book, let's try to get the person from the book. So we say dot get person because this part evaluates to a book and then get person is a method from the book. And if we inspect that, 
we get Fred. Now we can try one more thing just to show you how we can chain these methods together. Now we've got a person object and we can get the name of the person. So here we're getting a book object from the list, then we're getting the person from the book, and then we're getting the name from the person. Try it again, and we get a string Fred. We can find a book's position on the list using the index of method as follows. We type in IND, hit control space, and that gives us index of. Then we put in the object that we want the index of, in this case B2. And now if we evaluate this, we get number 1, meaning B2 is position 1, which is the second position on the list. So if we know the index, we can get the object. If we know the object, we can get the index. Now let's quickly look at two more methods. If we type list.rem and hit control space, we see a couple methods remove index or remove object. So we can remove either by knowing the position of the object we want to remove, or we can remove if we know if we have a reference to the object that we want removed. So let's try removing book one from the list. And then we'll look at the list again. And now when we look at the element data, we just have this the second book. And of course, now it's in position 0. It's moved up. Now we've seen how to create array lists and how to add, retrieve, and remove objects from them. In the next lesson, we'll use array lists in our library class. This is the end of Lesson 9. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.